Okay, today we have Daniel Cork from Belmont who's going to do an in-service on the Rapid Infuser and this will be a very brief in-service and I'll turn it right over to Daniel. Hello, how are you doing today? Always want to keep your machine plugged in at all times. You have up to a 30 minute battery power. Um, to load the machine, you always want, you have two components. You have the, the disposable tubing which comes boxed separately of the main tubing. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take this tubing out of the package drop it into this reservoir holder, just like this, okay? Then I want to manually put my tubing on, just like this, and clamp all of my blue clamps off. Make sure they're tight, clamped off. The next step is to remove the, the, the tubing out of the package and connect to this quick connect right down here, okay? Just a simple quick connect, and then tighten your lures. So you have a left lure, and you just tighten up just like this. So it's a total of two tubes, Two right? tubes, yeah. One, one just very much like the blood pressure That's right. tubing that we use, and the other one's just a lure lock. Once I, once I do that, then I want to go ahead and locate my arrows. I have a blue arrow, and I have a red arrow. I'm yep. going to take my blue arrow, point it towards the machine, and slide it into this top groove just like this. I always go flat across the surface, just kind of remind myself it needs to be flush. I take my red arrow and put it right where this red tab is. Once I do that, I take a look at it, and there's a diagram. I just follow the diagram just as it is. There's really no trick to it. The only thing I need to really remember to do is to press into this fluid out sensor, these two tubes, the tubing, and make sure that's seated real well right there. Okay, once I do that, make sure it's not kinked at the corners. Okay, close the door. You have to lift up on the handle a little bit, and that should be the most difficult part about loading it, is, is closing the door. When you say lift up on the handle, what did you mean by that? Oh, got a little twisted action there. So what I mean by that is, is there's a little hang up, so you want to lift up on the handle just like that and close it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Once I do that, then you can go ahead and turn your machine on. Here your patient. Show me where your power button is. Your power button is back here. There's a little circuit breaker. Okay. And I always tell people to pop it like it's hot, like a circuit breaker. Pop it. Okay. okay? Once you do that, your screen's going to come up with a little service button. It's going to ask you to unclamp your line. So. You have multiple lines up here. I always take the one by itself. See what look down here it's gonna say connect fluid bags, unclamp lines, and prime press prime to begin. So that's what that is. Okay, so then from there you'll just go up to the top, you'll open up your I'll bags. Hang one bag of saline um, by itself. If I forget, it's all going to one place, so it's not that important. Really okay, I'm gonna unclamp my line. It takes two hundred ml of fluid to prime, so once I drop two hundred in there, I can clamp that back off. And you can actually put 2,600 cc's of total That's right. blood components, and you could put anything in there, but tell us the three things that you should not you ever You should put. never put platelets, cryo, or calcium, or lactated ringers through the machine. So, to that end, really the fluids that we would never put in there is we would never put lactated ringers, we would never put anything, platelets, and we would never put cryoprecipitate. Okay, once, once it's asked you to prime, hit prime. It's going to count down from 100 to 0. It's getting all that residual air through the main course system, through the filter, out to the atmosphere. It takes 12 to 15 seconds, so it eliminates the, the fact that you have to sit there and de-air the bag. Then it's going to ask you to prime patient line, so a two-step process. Prime patient line. You see the air coming out of the line? Yes. You press and hold to go faster. Into the trash can. This is my trash can and patient. Now, notice that I've put an extension on there now. Because this line, the, the normal line wasn't long enough, so I added an extension, the third layer. So and that's a special extension. It's just a straight connection that they, that we that we provide. But it's, but it's, a, it's a special connection. That you yep. Provide. Yep. Go Never put a, something that's smaller diameter through yeah. this line because it could cause high pressure. So make sure it's connected real tightly. Okay. Yeah. Once you do that and get all the air out of the line, you can press and hold to go faster. Once you're satisfied the air is out, hit stop, and you're ready for that patient to arrive in the room. Yeah, okay. When your patient arrives in the room, it's important to go ahead and connect directly to that patient line. Don't put a hep lock or clave, just directly to that patient line. Okay, once you connect to that patient, go back and confirm that everything is tightened up. You don't want the baptism by Belmont. And so, <laughs> and make sure all this is tightened up right there. Okay? Once everything is confirmed, you're into the patient, go ahead and infuse. 
it asks you to infuse, you infuse, and you're going at 10 mLs per minute. Now let me get into the screen so that they can see it. Now, I might need to turn that light off behind you just because it could be too much glare. Let's try that. How about that? Um, I think, let's turn the other one off to that one off for a second. That's better. That's that's the best. Okay. okay, let me zoom in on the screen so that everyone can see this. All right, so the screen basically is showing that, well, it says it's infusing. So, yeah, I'm going to start it from the beginning. So just kind of show what, because I don't think... So you turned it on, it has a little power button, then it's going to ask you, it's going to go through a little setup. Okay, then it's going to ask you to prime. So it's a two-step process, counting down from 100 to zero, getting all that residual air from the main core system through this filter out the atmosphere. Then it's going to ask you to prime patient line. Okay, press and hold to go faster. At this point, that's when you want to go ahead and add that extension if it's not enough for him to reach your patient. Once you get the air out of the line visually, check and confirm, you hit stop. You're ready for your patient to arrive in the room at this point. When you're ready for your patient, when your patient arrives in the room and you're ready to connect, go ahead and connect directly to that patient line. Don't put a HEP lock or anything and like that. Is there a line that's got to be at least what size IV? Um, it, there's no dictation on what size. The catheter size will dictate the flow rate for you. Okay. So even if you were put it to a 20, which is way too small for what we would want, if that's all you had it initially, would that would still it work. It would still run it. It, it would just so run very slowly. It, it has a, a sensor, and if the pressure's too high, it backs that's off. That's right. But ideally, you would like to, if a big case, put this to a hog. Are, mm -hmm. are very very large uh, but that's the office. advantage of the Belmont is it, it's all encompassing and run throughout the entire hospital okay. okay so when you're connected to that patient everything is connected hit infuse okay so you automatically hit infuse at 10 mLs per minute this is your actual rate and just let me just add 10 mLs per minute everything on here is set per minute so we know that mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, 600 cc's um, per hour right so when we're at 10, we're at 600 per hour. So everything here is in minutes. Okay. So it's automatically in. So you're in, so I'm infusing up, or I can hit 500 mLs per minute. It's a shortcut. Okay. So if you want to do a, a quick bolus, you can bolus. You can set your bolus, but uh, this has the ability just to drop 500 cc's on the patient in a minute if you so choose. If you do choose it and you want to stop it for whatever reason, you can interrupt it as well. Notice what the actual rate is, 225. I'm mimicking 18 gauge triple lumen. So as it senses that patency in the line, it backs itself off to protect that patient. Even though I wanted 500 mLs per minute, look what that flow rate is. So he's doing that by kinking the line a little bit to demonstrate you know, that, that uh, this will, it monitors the pressure in the line. And if it can't flow at that desired rate, it's gonna flow at the best rate without exceeding a certain critical pressure. When it runs out of fluid, it, it automatically senses it. You do not have to disconnect from your patient. All you have to do is unclamp your line. Okay, a new bag of RBC you can run them all at the same time. You can hang on and drop it, hit reprime. So you do have to separate it from the patient to make sure there's no No, you do not have to separate it. It's already connected. In other words, it'll stop with this 200 stop cc's automatically. in it so that if you run out of volume, you never have to look for air again. That's right. So when you say reprime, what is it actually doing? It just it, so what it happens is is it senses that it senses that pain, so it senses the air and clamps itself off at this right here, and then recirculates the air back out gotcha. through the system. That's why there's a dual line it. system. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, now explain to me what this recirc button is, because that's something new. Recirc is to stir to agitate your RBCs that are sinking. So if you want to stir and mix up your um, and get a homogenous mix, drop some saline, stir and agitate those. So say your patient is stable and you want to recirculate um, while, while your patient's waiting good for liver transplants and things like that, or just large vascular cases. So you have a stable patient, hit that recirc button. You're not infusing okay, to the patient. Okay, so I'm starting to understand now better. In other words, because there's two lines here, you hit recirculate, nothing's going to the patient. That's right. You're not just recirculating the, what's in the tubing, it's actually sending this warmed blood back up into this reservoir. That's right. So it's research, It's taking fluid, blood, plasma out of the reservoir, bringing it through the machine. That's right. It automatically warms everything and then keeps it circulating. That's why you can keep running. We've done 34 gallons of blood on the same tubing because you just sit there and research. No, you don't ever filter anything. That's right. And um, 
So show me how you would, uh, if, if you have it on recirc and as soon as you hit a bolus, then it obviously turns off recirc. Uh -huh. And um, is there anything that we have to do as far as setting the temperature of this or nope. it just sets the temperature it's automatically? It's already set for you. Okay. And so even though it says set right here, you don't really press up here at all. This is no. just telling you the only areas that we really need to press are going to be this whole bottom section. The whole bottom section. Bottom That's section correct. only. And then you can increase, it says it's at 500 cc's, you can increase it here by pressing here and it'll automatically, let's say it's at 500 now. How do I get it to go higher? Just press and hold like you're doing. It's at 500 right now. No, it's not. It's at two. It's at four. Oh, it's, okay. So or if you want to go a shortcut to 500, it's just in, there you go. Okay, so I'm, I held my finger on it and you can see. So this number doesn't change. Right. This is the infused rate. This is the set rate. So how do you get this here to change? So that brought it back to 500. If I go lower, it's it, this is staying at 500. Does this ever change? No, this never changes. This is just a shortcut button. Oh, that's just this is just it's a, an emergency. I call it my emergency okay. button. So these up and down arrows don't affect this. No. These up and down arrows affect this. No, that's right. That's just a, well, okay, gotcha. So if you want to infuse at 500, do this. If you want it to be something less or greater than, you can do this. Mm -hmm. You can bolus at five at 1,000. Show, show us how to change. So the if bolus. you want to change your bolus, you must hit stop. Okay, here you press and hold down your bolus button, and where the volume was is where your options are. I have big fingers, so there you go. So here's your options, 100, 200, 400, 500, and 1,000. So say I want to run it, say I want to run a maintenance flow rate at 10 mLs per minute at a, at a bolus of 100. Okay, so I've changed my bolus. Now I want it to return to 10, so I'm gonna set my maintenance flow rate to 10 mLs per minute. Okay, so I want it to return back to 10. Now I hit my bolus. Okay, once I hit bolus, it automatically goes to a default of 200, which I can change up and down. It's going to return back to 10 when I'm done. So when I'm done running this volume of bolus, it runs back down to 10 mLs okay. per minute. So the, the fastest you could do, if you have a very, very large IV, the fastest you could deliver this would be 1,000 cc's in a minute. Per minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, which, you know... <laughs> <laughs> a liter a minute, you give 60 liters an hour. Right. You know, and, and so it's it's amazing how much yeah. you can uh, deliver. But of course, you know, these large volumes are going to be what we use, typically we'd use if you were doing a liver transplant or some type of, you know, a major aortic surgery, a thoracic aortic surgery, cardiac surgery. But right. those are some incredible volumes. But these are what's standard in all liver transplants, would mm -hmm. you say? Yes. All the major liver trans. Li um, liver um, hospitals in the country, major hospitals, they all use the Belmont. And, and would you say uh, this is being sold all over the world, right? All over the world. Right. If you're a trauma center, you've got to have a Belmont rapid infuser, period. Okay. And um, what we're planning to do is tell us about our little trial period. We think we're so we're going to do um, an evaluation of uh, Belmont. Um, we can up to three months long. Uh, first six tubing that you use is no charge to the hospital and the rental or just the loaner of the Belmonts are no charge for three months. And what is the approximate cost of the disposables for one patient? So for one patient for the large bucket is 200. We also offer one that's $100 a patient. But the, the advantage is, is you don't have to sit there and dis re change out tubing every four or five units. It, you can, we've done 34 gallons of blood with the same tubing. So imagine doing that with a level one, you'd probably have to change it out eight times. That would cost you $800 in tubing. Do we ever have to change out the tubing in with one of these? With a level one, you do. No. With, level, with this one, you never. No, you just so utilize you your research large, button. If you use the large reservoir or the small reservoir, there'd be no reason to change tubing. It's just common sense. As long as you utilize your research button and keep stirring and mixing up your and make sure nothing's getting clotted, you should never have to change it out. Okay, and then um, machines around 25000 Right. And um, that's really, is there anything else that that's you it. think we need to know? No passwords or anything like nope. that to get in? Okay, great. Simple as that. Thank, Thank you, you for your very time. Much.